Want to add a little rustic charm to your space? Check this out. All right, so the colors that we're gonna use in this project are some of my favorite. We're gonna start off with some mica powders, and the first one is a dark bronze. Absolutely gorgeous. Very metallic, very, very pretty. Copper, these are available on our website, rk3designs.com. And this product is actually a paste. It's from Just Resin. Beautiful, mixes so well, and it's called Pearl White. Now, this is a color I haven't used a lot, but I absolutely love it. This is Purple Mountain. This is also a mica powder, and we used it in a finish that we did this weekend in one of our classes. Now, for this, I used black opaque dye and brown opaque dye mixed one-to-one -one so that I get uh, a very dark, dark chocolate. But then I came in and put bronze glitter just to give it a hint of sparkle. Isn't that pretty? So by mixing your black and your brown dye together, you really create a very, very rich, rich, dark brown. So the substrate that we're using is a substrate that our students actually built in class, they learn how to do a rock edge, and we also show them how to do a, sm a smooth edge. We painted it with two coats of our stone coat countertop undercoating in black, and let it dry for four hours, and we're ready to get going. All right, I wanted to show you one thing quickly. When we do a smooth edge on a countertop, whether you're doing an on-site pour, or you're fabricating your own countertop, make sure that you round over your edge. We use a quarter inch round over bit, both top and bottom. What that does is as the epoxy starts to flow, it doesn't stop and create surface tension. It'll flow nice and easy over, creating a really pretty edge. Also then we'll take our hand and as that drip goes under and develops here, we take our hand and we'll rub it. Now, the reason we round over our bottom is because if you leave this at a hard 90 degree angle, like you see a lot of laminate uh, countertops, you'll actually see once the countertops or the epoxy starts to dry, you'll see a little ledge here. And what that, what's happening is your epoxy is rolling over and it's not dripping. It's almost got a certain amount of uh, um, surface tension, and then as it cures, it's not wanting to drip, and that's how you get that little lip. So if you're not able to sand down and create a rolled edge on your bottom, what you'll wanna do is every few hours, you'll wanna run your finger down that edge, and that's gonna help that epoxy drip and go underneath the surface or underneath your ledge. Okay, so let's get started. I like to fog my edges when I have a rock edge because it's gonna allow some of those colors to kind of peekaboo through as that epoxy rolls over the edge. If you'll notice, I have a rock edge and it's painted black, but there's not a lot of depth and detail in this. So what I wanna do is kind of create an illusion of depth before I pour my epoxy. So I'm gonna come over first with a copper and I'm gonna very lightly fog, okay? I don't want to fog hard like this. Okay, you really don't want to do that. You want to be pretty subtle so that you don't create a really hard line on the top. All right, so that was copper. This is dark bronze. Can't really see that dark bronze too much. Creates a little bit of a depth. Now, what you can do is if you want a little bit more of that black to show through, what you'll do is get some alcohol. Now you have to do this fairly quickly while your paint's still wet. Then you're gonna go back and you're gonna kind of spray and wipe. See how that brings that black back up so that it'll just kind of peekaboo and that's exactly what I'm looking for. If you wait too long and you can't wipe it with a paper towel, you can get a scrubby pad. 
With the scrubby pad, you're gonna do the same thing. It's just gonna be a little more aggressive and pull a little bit more of that paint off. But I really like how these colors are going down into the crevices. That's exactly the look I'm looking for. I really like that. Look at the detail coming in. I like that. Now remember, this is just background, so you can get as aggressive as you want, pull off as much as you want, or you can just leave the whole thing that copper color. I like that. You can also fog your flat edge as well. Um, I don't usually see as much of the undertones when I'm doing a flat edge because of the epoxy's running over um, pretty uniform, so I don't see a lot of that fogging. Uh, if you're using light colors, you may wanna go ahead and fog and then you'll definitely see those colors pop from underneath. All right, so I'm gonna come in with my dark bronze first. Beautiful color. Now I'm just gonna kinda lay this down, not really in a striation, but just kinda in big areas, not really being super picky where it goes. All right, that was my dark bronze. Here's my copper, same thing. And we're at three ounces per square foot. So I'm not gonna tape my edges. I get a lot of questions why I don't tape my edges on all of my pores. And if I'm using three ounces per square foot, I don't have enough material on my surface to justify taping my edges because once I pull my tape, it's not gonna flow over as nicely. Now, if I'm doing a dirty pour or a melted marble or a finish where I'm using more than three ounces per square foot, that is when I will tape my edges. All right, here's my white pearl. Now this I wanna be a, kinda go in the middle a little bit, just kinda going around these areas. I'm gonna save a little bit of that in my cup. All righty, now I'm gonna come in with my dye, my brownish black dye. Now that I'm gonna be a little more striated because I want that bling to kind of be throughout my piece. Also, I'm gonna save a little bit in my cup for later on. All right, guys, here comes the purple. Now, if you don't wanna use purple in your piece, you most definitely don't have to. I was so pleasantly surprised to see how well the purple went in this piece when we did it in class that I wanted to show you guys. But you could definitely leave this out. You could come in with maybe a turquoise, imagine that. Turquoise would be beautiful. Or just about any other accent color. Okay, love it. All right, now let's take, and I like to warm up my epoxy a little bit before I do uh, start melding it. I'm gonna take this very expensive tool here, my hand, and I'm gonna just start melding that out. One reason I like to use my hands is I'll be able to see and feel if I have any little foreign bodies in the epoxy. And I'm a little bit vertically challenged here, so I'm having a tough time. All right, now I'm gonna come around to the front and I'm gonna make sure that I push that epoxy over the edge. Same thing with my smooth edge, take my hand, and I'm gonna push that epoxy over the edge because once I help that epoxy start flowing over the edge, it's gonna flow much easier because epoxy likes to flow where there's already epoxy. All right, make sure I have all my surface tension taken care of. So now I'm just gonna pull that over and I'm not gonna push a lot of that product over, just gonna kinda help it flow and then take my hand and kinda rub on my rock edges. To be honest, I don't, really worry about filling in every single little crack with epoxy because for one, what I usually do after I do this color coat is I'll come back with a glaze, an acrylic glaze, and I'll put a glaze on this edge before I put my flood coat or even after my flood coat, you can come back and put a glaze and that just really makes the edge, the rock edge pop. And then I know with my flood coat, I'll be able to get a really good cover on my rock edge. All right, so now as those colors continue to flow, it'll look very, very natural. Okay, so I melded it out and I was very mindful not to over mix my colors. I want 
separation in my color. So don't over meld it. Uh, I torched it to get the surface bubbles out. And now I'm gonna let it set for about 10, maybe 15 minutes. I want the uh, epoxy to start to thicken up just a little bit. All right, so we're back. It's been about 15 minutes. The reason we wait is when you use metallic mica powders and you mix them up in your epoxy and then you put them down on your surface. Immediately, because the epoxy is fluid and the mica powders uh, or the mica particles are heavier, they start to sink as soon as you put them down on the surface. So by waiting, we're allowing those mica powders to kind of sink. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come and almost wake them up, re-agitate them, and it creates some really cool effects. So I'm gonna take a Bondo spreader. You could take your hand, you could do a paintbrush, just about anything that you want. I love Bondo spreaders because I can create some really cool looks. So what you can do, and I'm gonna stand on this stool because I'm short, is you can come in here and very lightly get a really smooth look if you want a very, very soft melded look, or you can come in here, take your Bondo spreader, and as I drag it, I'm kind of turning it, and I'm creating a really cool look and texture. Now, if you were to do this immediately after you put your color on the surface, this would not stay at all. It would look really pretty for a few minutes, and then all of this would settle back out. But by allowing your epoxy to sit on the surface a little bit and thicken up, it gives you the ability to kind of manipulate it and move it around. Now, I love this look of getting all of this pretty texture, especially since we're gonna be going a couple of steps. Now, you can see that I am bringing in some bubbles. I'm not really worried about that. I'll lightly torch to get those out, but I don't wanna put too much heat because then what will happen is then I'll just make my epoxy go back down or go backwards, basically going into a more fluid state. Now, if I want some of it to be smooth, I can come back and smooth it out. You're just kind of really creating an unusual surface. So what I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna texturize one side of this piece. That way you guys can see the difference between the two and see if you like it, okay? On this one, I'm just gonna kind of come through I'm gonna softly meld those colors, keeping it very smooth and very soft, waking up the mica powders. You can even do this with your hand if you wanted to. Just kind of waking those powders up. All right, okay, I'm gonna torch lightly. Remember, not too much heat. Okay, now here's one of my favorite parts. Now I'm gonna come in with some alcohol. 91% isopropyl alcohol. When alcohol hits a metallic powder, it creates a beautiful design. So what this is, it's coffee mica powder, and I mixed it with 91% isopropyl alcohol at a ratio of a quarter of an ounce to eight ounces of the alcohol. I'm gonna adjust my sprayer. So it gives me not a super fine mist and I'm barely gonna squeeze the trigger. Just barely put any of that alcohol on the surface. A Little bit over here. Now by putting colored alcohol, what happens is once that alcohol evaporates, that metallic powder is gonna stay on the surface. And as you look at it, it'll have a little bit of a sheen to it. All right, now, you can also do this with just clear alcohol. You can do that. All right, I'm gonna let this set just a little bit. Let all that kind of react. You can see here, you get some really cool reactions. Now, what's really fun with this is I can decide to come in, and if I don't want those reactions on all of my area, I can redrag it, maybe just leave it in a couple of spots. This is just one more level of detail. You're just layering and layering different designs 
really giving your piece some character. See, I like that by having two different, some with the design and some not. I think that's really pretty. I think I'm gonna do that over here as well. I'm gonna kind of come in here and move it around a little bit. Now you don't wanna mix up too much. You'll start really melding your colors, but ever so often it's kind of a neat look. This, either one of them could be a finish all on its own, but guess what? I'm gonna go to the next step. I'm gonna take this marbled striation and I'm gonna add some granification to it. It's actually become one of my new favorite techniques to add to a piece to really give it some character. Um, like I said, you don't have to do this next step, but I am loving it. All right, so I'm gonna come in with some black paint. Uh, the black paint seems to work the best. You can use other colors. Light colors seem to not do a granification as well as your darker colors. Gloss seems to work better than your satin colors. So just make sure before you do this on a piece that you practice and you use the colors that you are gonna use in your actual piece so that you know and kind of uh, expect the reactions that you're gonna get. So I'm coming in with black gloss. And I don't want the whole surface to be granified, okay? I'm gonna do it in sections and only a little bit of it. Uh, if you want a lot of granification, obviously you'll use more spray paint. If you just want it in a few spots, you can use less. All right, so here we go. Now when I do this, I'm not doing it so thick that I can't see down into the piece. I can still see some of my colors underneath. I'm not putting so much of that paint on the surface that I can't look down and see. Now when you do this, as soon as you put your spray paint, you need to immediately come back with your alcohol. I do big drips first, doing my Italian drip here as Erica likes to call it. Once I do my big drips, then I'm gonna come in with a little bit smaller drips and I'm not squeezing my trigger on my spray bottle, but very, very lightly, just so I have little drops. Again, be super mindful of how much epoxy you're putting on the surface because if you put too much epoxy, your finish will get very blurry. Now I'm just kind of coming along the edge, flicking my fingers to kind of blend that hard edge out so you can't see where the spray paint starts. So I'm not really adding a lot of alcohol to the surface. I'm really just kind of using what's on my glove. Right here, I have a really dark, heavy spot, and I don't like that, so I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit more. I'll kind of watch that. I can always come back and add more. Now, I have some big spots right here. I'm gonna add a little bit more. Now, this is a finish, guys, you, a technique. You have to wait, and you have to let the epoxy kind of show you what's gonna happen next. Don't make a whole lot of decisions right at the beginning. Come around to my front, get my edge just a little bit. Now I'm gonna like how that's gonna flow over there. That's gonna be really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let that set up for just a little bit. Like I said, don't make a decision too early. Let the epoxy and the spray paint and the alcohol all kind of do its thing. So it's been about, I don't know, five minutes or so. The alcohol has uh, evaporated and left some beautiful designs uh, in the spray paint. I love this technique and I absolutely love this finish. I could see this in an outdoor kitchen uh, or in a very rustic home. Beautiful, beautiful design and it's really easy to recreate. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Also give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Guys, we are blowing up and I'm so excited and I'm so thankful for everybody that has subscribed. Also check out our website, rk3designs.com to have a full line of epoxy supplies and colorants. Until next week, remember, don't be scared. Move forward and always be creative. Love you. Bye.